The goal this week is for you to really get a deep understanding of UDL guidelines. And you may, you may be asked on your final to apply these guidelines to a scenario that may involve educational technology in some way. And so uh, this is a great website, udlguidelines.cast.org, that I'll link for you. Uh, this is really the only website you need for this. I'm not sure what you've learned in the past about UDL, um, but really this, the, these guidelines is really the meat and potatoes of what I'm going to be grading you on um, if, if it shows up on the final. So we have here the three UDL guidelines providing multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, and multiple means of action and expression in the design of a learning environment that reduces the barriers of learning and creates uh, optimal challenge for all learners. Okay, we can't make 25 lesson plans for 25 students, but we can, as teachers, as designers of learning, we can remove some of the barriers that some students face. And that not only helps those students, but it helps all students. Therefore, we don't have to make 25 lesson plans and we're creating a great learning environment for everybody. So the other thing you should know about these UDL guidelines, under each of these three different principles, three different guidelines rather, are some sub guidelines. So in providing multiple means of engagement, you've got three sub guidelines, options for recruiting interest, sustaining effort and persistence and self-regulation. Those three things are also important to note and you'll see there are examples of underneath that, you don't need to memorize all of this stuff, like all these sub bullets, but you do need to know the guideline and the sub guidelines. And some of these bullet points can help you explain and understand what these guidelines are. For example, if you're trying to explain what providing options for self-regulation could mean, you could look to some of these sub bullets as an example. You don't need to know all of them, but knowing what some of these are can help you explain that. So really in terms of a retail or a description or a written piece that may be on a final, what I would really need to know uh, and have you explain back is your understanding of these one, two, three guidelines, as well as the nine sub guide, the three sub guidelines for each of the three. So kind of these nine sub guidelines. Um, the other thing to note about this particular for planning framework is that at this top level here, most of the work and the thinking is being and the planning is being done by the teacher. The teacher is trying to provide options for recruiting the student's interest. The teacher is trying to provide options for displaying information uh, for the students, not just through text, but through other ways for helping them understand. The teacher is providing options for the students to, you know, take action and use different tools uh, to explain back what they know. But as you move down to the following levels and specifically to the bottom level here. This is where we're starting to get the students to understand themselves as learners. This is really important, a really important aspect of UDL. You, we want to get the students to understand themselves as learners such that by the time they get to this level, they know how to self-regulate. They know how to understand. They know themselves well enough as learners and what they need to understand and they have developed executive functioning skills like goal setting and keeping track of monitoring progress on their own learning. So they become more independent and self-directed as you move down this list horizontally. So that's the other thing to know about the UDL guidelines. And if you need any more information on here, the frequently asked questions section of this web page is good because it uh, really even will dial it back a bit like what are we even talking about with UDL what does it actually mean okay uh, as well the about section is very good as well um, and finally Dr. David Rose does a really nice three and a half minute overview video of explaining these guidelines 
uh, that is definitely worth a watch. And it can really help you make sense of, as a teacher, what would you do with these guidelines? It isn't just for you to own as a teacher and never, you know, just yourself in planning. It's certainly a good starting point, making sure you're designing the learning environment properly. But it's also about helping the students over time understand themselves as learners. And that's difficult, particularly at the elementary level having kids understand themselves as learners and what they need to learn. And this is a process that can take years, um, but it's certainly something to work towards. And you can see at the very bottom here what the end goal is. Develop learners who are purposeful and motivated, who are resourceful and knowledgeable and strategic goal directed. So that's this is really the meat and potatoes of what you need to know um, about UDL from my vantage point. Um, and that's all you really need to uh, dig in on uh, this week for learning UDL.